you know, it's, it's quite interesting. I met this guy who was teaching about the scalar energy, zero point energy, and how it's all around us and it's the God energy of creation. And it was placed there for us to activate and use it for our purposes. So this scalar energy, our lobes of our brain, both sides create vortexes of energy when we're thinking thoughts and it activates that scalar energy and starts creating things. Well, as we become more powerful, more aligned with the creator, those vortexes of energy get even more powerful and we learn how to add love from our heart. And our heart, you know, our brain works in uh, what we call millivolts, which is thousands of a volt. But our heart actually works in kilovolts, which is 1,000 volts. And so if we can bring those thoughts down into our heart with love, and activate those kilovolts, it becomes even more powerful with creating things from the scalar energy. And so, you know, these are things St. Germain taught me and uh, very, very powerful. But our, our DNA creates and makes actual little miniature equilateral triangular pyramids. And these pyramids are the perfect, perfect geometry. And Metatron talked me about, you know, the sacred geometry. These pyramids actually collect energy from other dimensions and make it usable by us. But when we get our DNA damaged, see one of the reasons the scientists wanted to do this uh, human genome project was they wanted to know all about our genes. And they kept telling us, oh, there's junk genes. But they realized these, this genetic matter is very powerful. In fact, there's a study from about 20 years ago where the scientists put DNA into a Petri dish by itself, not even in a cell. And they used different devices to look at the DNA in this Petri dish. And they came to find these that the DNA was producing energy and they couldn't figure out what the heck, how is this DNA doing anything? It's not even in a cell. It's not dividing. All it's doing is sitting in this Petri dish and it's producing energy. And they studied it and studied it and they found that it was actually making little wormholes into other dimensions and the energies were coming through and they actually took the DNA out of the Petri dish and they found these little energies were still being produced in the Petri dish with nothing in it. And they came to find these wormholes stayed for about 42 days, which is very significant. Uh, 42 days, if you ever listen to the movie The Secret, they talk about how if you hold a thought in your mind for 42 days, it changes your cells and you have new daughter cells that are totally different and healthier than your previous cells. Now, if you're thinking bad thoughts, it actually degrades your cells. But if you're bringing good positive thoughts, it makes your cells be rejuvenated and even more powerful than they were before. So when we reproduce and make new DNA, the DNA is actually improved and better and more powerful. So that's why we all have to watch our thoughts because our thoughts are always creating, whether it's negative or positive. Sounds like you have something to say here. Yeah, there was an uh, interesting, um, you know, you made some points here. Um, you know, uh, I'm gonna comment a little bit on the pyramids, but. Um, one of the, uh, the contactees from a guy, a famous uh, contactee named Commander X, who's having some physical contacts, uh, some of the extraterrestrial intelligence, which is their science, can help us as we move forward to understand the truth of, of our science and healing, which you know we all know is uh, being skewed a bit uh, by the powers that be, but it's still knowledge that's out there and the truth can be connected to within, but one of the uh, things they said was what we are the result of. In other words,
uh, materials of both of our parents. We are also influenced by magnetic conditions at time of conception. In other words, where you are on the planet in terms of astrology with other uh, magnetic forces or, or planetary influences which have a certain energy frequencies along certain, let's call them ray energies of the masters. We also have magnetic conditions at time of birth, which is more commonly known as our astrology, our birth natal chart. We're also influenced by nature of environment. So, you know, if you're born in a toxic waste dump or near certain factors that are going to affect your physiological structure according to the laws of nature, that's going on. We're also uh, affected by liquids and foods digested. In other words, for those of you who know, uh, pyramids have a life force field. So if you put a pyramid over your food, it can actually revitalize your food and your vitamins. It can charge your water with prana or life force energy due to the magnetic and uh, multi-dimensional energies that are within a pyramid. You can uh, keep, uh, you know, uh, vegetables and fruits healthier by uh, creating a negative ion effect. So the pyramids are very intimately associated with life force. So when you eat food, folks, you're extracting a life force. Oh, yeah, it tastes good, but that denatured flour with, uh, that's been enriched with vitamins instead of whole grains um, can be causing problems. And now even if you eat whole grains, unfortunately, glycophosphate, uh, Scott and I talked about that in our last show, you got Roundup going on. So uh, all those conditions, and guess what the most powerful influence was? Genetic conditions at time of birth, conception, or uh, magnetic conditions, plus uh, your parents, nature environment, uh, liquids and foods digested. They also said there was a factor of karma in there that uh, the soul will have certain uh, situations and challenges brought before it. We may consider it suffering or pain, but as Rumi said, uh, the wounds that we have is where the light comes in. So uh, <laughs> we have karmic conditions that come in our life, but as Scott said, the number one uh, cause of our 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 condition, which is the sum total of everything, is our thoughts and our feelings. So the science of the extraterrestrials is for mankind to become in touch with his thoughts and feelings. And most people know that you have gray matter in the brain, but you also have it on the diaphragm. The brain is the home of reason, and the diaphragm, which connects at the tip of the breastbone there, is the center of feeling. And so women are typically more in touch with their feelings. And hey, guys, it doesn't make sense. You, you're all logical and go, well, I didn't mean that, thinking that. It doesn't negate the fact of what the goddess or the woman is feeling. So we need to tune into the feelings. We need to respect the feelings of others. At the same time, we need to unify our thoughts and feelings. And so one of the aspects of the secret taken to the next level is the technology of the pyramids with which is given to us by the Pleiadians is on my website. You can look under Pyramid Systems, but we go into, if you go into one of these systems and use your concentration, and that's one of the secrets to uh, ascension is to concentrate, to hold our thoughts steady on an object or a goal or to become a master in uh, understanding and focus. So that's one of the keys is for us to learn how to focus. And, you know, it's no one can think of anything for 42 days straight. Uh, you, you'll be lucky if you can keep your mind still for a couple seconds and enter into the silence. But one of the ideas for manifestation is to hold the image of what you, you seek and desire with passion and utilizing your focus. Imagine what it would smell like, what it would taste like, what your body position, what you'd be wearing, uh, what the smells would be like. Uh, what the leather of a new car, if you wanted a new car. And to hold that image uh, as your birthright in abundance to magnetize to yourself. Uh, and most people do that for material things. 
Shasta. Scott, why don't you share with us? I mean, uh, I heard the story when I was in Hawaii after you had your experience with St. Germain, you were on fire. I've been doing these protocols that Scott has given us. Um, I printed out those pictures that he talked about of the archangels, and I laminated them, and I put them on the floor, and I put one under each foot and one on my head while I do this uh, visualization decree. And I'm in my second round of 12 days now, but I do that decree that he has. He has a, a long visualization manifestation decree, uh, which is very specific uh, for us to connect in and to feel the energies. So, Scott, share with us what uh, St. Germain and Metatron shared with you, your experience with them, and, and uh, you know, talk about that decree and, and how that 24-strand uh, DNA activation that I'm doing and everything uh, is aiding in the DNA re redevelopment. Yes. Now, the original human beings that came to the planet, as taught by St. Germain, came from a place called Eden. And Eden was a big planet that orbited between Mars and Jupiter, which became the asteroid belt. We, You know, we humans, we do dumb things and they blew up Eden, which is sad because Eden was a planet that had literally the humans living there it was the Garden of Eden. They had all the food they needed. They, you know, just went out and picked off the trees and found food. And it was a lush, green, beautiful planet. And uh, some of them, you know, they started getting scientists and then developing their culture. And they left. And some of them went to Mars. Some of them went to Venus. Some of them went to Earth. And it's quite interesting because when they blew up the planet, it blew the atmosphere off of Mars and, you know, created all kinds of problems. But anyway, the original humans who came to Earth had 24 strands of DNA and they'd lived to be almost a thousand years old. Think about the stories of Methuselah, Noah, Adam, and, and uh, you know, these, these people, early people on the planet, they lived very long lives and they were, were extremely healthy because they had the 24 strands of DNA. And then enter in the Anunnaki and you know all these characters that were created in other worlds. And they came and they wanted to enslave the humans and use our energy, believe it or not. And so they, they literally uh, had us uh, do things that were against what God had taught us you know, bestiality, uh, homosexuality, you name it, we, we did it. And I, I don't want to say anything against any anything, but, but these are the teachings that St. Germain gave me. And it actually started degrading our DNA. And, you know, even some of us have Neanderthal blood. There was uh, prehistoric humanoids here on the planet when we arrived and we had our 24 strand DNA and these Neanderthals only had two strands and you know you go out and get your DNA tested by 23 and me and a lot of us have Neanderthal DNA now how did we get that well guess how and when you combine a 24 stranded human being with a two stranded human being the father and or the mother only has one strand to give to combine with the other DNA and the the superhumans the 24 stranded humans would you know have the 12 strands and only one could combine so the other DNA was lost and that's how modern humans ended up being who we are was we lost all our DNA now there were some people on the planet who did not uh, fall away from the Creator. Uh, one group of these people were called the Essenes. And the Essenes were a nomadic people who stayed away from everybody else because they didn't want to contaminate their DNA and they wanted to follow the gods. And Jesus came from this progenity because Mother Mary was an Essene. And the father of Jesus was. A higher dimensional being called the Father. 
And so Jesus ended up with 24 strand of DNA because of his mother and his father. And but he came as a very pure soul that hadn't committed atrocities during his many lifetimes. And so there was power within his soul to do the many things that he did. And he came to teach us about love. And the biggest problem was most of the people were Neanderthals and weren't into love. They were into, you know, confusion and sex and whatever. So it's quite interesting as St. Germain gave me all this history. And he taught me it just so I could teach others. You know, I'm not trying to, you know, be naughty to any human being because we're all in this together. We all have to make the changes to go through the ascension because we're all integrated into the energies of the one. And the one means we're all in contact with each other at all times. We're all very te telepathic, but most of us don't use that te telepathy for good purposes. We just think naughty thoughts and then we send these thoughts to others and and uh, you know it creates more chaos. And actually every thought we have creates something. So we need to be careful what we think about others. You know, that's why Jesus said, don't judge that you don't be judged. Because <laughs> we, we, can't, we can't do this to people. And so uh, St. Germain brought the 24 strand divine invocation because he says it's time that we prepare our bodies by re-putting the perfected DNA back into every cell in our bodies, including our blood and our lymph. You know, when I went to medical school, the blood doesn't have DNA in it. And it usually lasts, it, well, when I started medical school, it lasts 180 days on average. Now, currently, because of all the toxins, radiation, and crap, our red blood cells are only lasting about 60 days, so about a third of the time they used to last. But it, when you add the 24 strand DNA, your red blood cells, the, it literally makes them last for years. And your, your uh, other cells last for years. And so it even makes it so that, you know, we uh, the scientists we're trying to prove that we only have a finite number of uh, cell divisions where the DNA separates and makes a new cell. Well, with the 24 strand DNA, there is not a finite number. And so that's why the bodies can live so much longer and it makes you so much healthier. And so by doing the 24 strand DNA manifestation, you can perfect your cells in your body and make them much stronger with that DNA. And it makes the proteins, the nucleoli, you know, all of the organelles, everything on a microcosm level. We have a very 